Hey guys, here is the time lapse video from everything I did on week 5. I'll be streaming weekdays starting from 8am New Zealand Standard Time for an hour each day. If anyone is interested in progress updates as well as announcements on when I'll be streaming, you can find that on my Twitter. And if anyone has any questions, just add them down below and I'll be sure to get to them. All links in the description. For these sketches, they just have the same process as the previous ones I've already posted. So there's nothing really to talk about while I'm establishing the sketch. The basic process with these are a rough line drawing to start, then working over that with a tighter, more detailed line drawing. For the pose, I think having the paws parallel to each other is kind of static. I should have made one arm fully straightened while keeping the opposite bent. I think that would have made the pose look more like a leaping pose with the straight arms pushing off the ground. After that, I tried to group the shadows around the face and place the car shadows with the idea in mind of trying to help show the form. The goal is to have it read as a thumbnail. If you can tell what is going on in the thumbnail, that usually means your values were grouped well. Once that's done, I start with the tight line work, keeping in mind not to fill in the shadow areas as I will do that on a separate layer to make it easier to change things going forward if needed. It's also faster to leave the shadows for later. One of the problems with adding shadows later, however, is for the most part, shadows help show you where the forms aren't working. It is interesting coming back to these after a few weeks, seeing all the issues I could have done differently or fixed at the time. Usually this is the case of you getting better with time, but some composition problems I could have probably fixed with doing a few more thumbnails. If anything, a few more thumbnails would have helped get out all my generic ideas and maybe lead to more interesting ones. The only problem is I don't really have much time with these sketches, but I should probably add some kind of thumbnailing in the future. Another thing you'll see me do is use the lasso tool to select out shadow areas. This is great with helping to see how the grouped shadows will look before actually committing to anything and it allows you to scribble in the shadows in the selected areas. Something to look out for though is it creates really hard edges so that's something you'll have to go over later if you want the forms to read properly. Halfway through this sketch I kind of felt that it was looking alright but an issue with working at such dark values is that it flattens your forms which is something to keep in mind as you go forward in the image. You'll need to add a gradient in the shadows which will make it look more natural as it suggests the bounce light from the environment.
I'm really still trying to find a style for these creature cards I'm doing. I'm still playing with adding either a suggested background or just basic shapes or nothing at all. Maybe even just a ground plane. So when doing these I wasn't sure if I was going to do a background or not. And because of that I kind of start with trying to add some basic shapes around the bear but as I go forward I move into a suggested background. Kind of wasting time there but after this point I start deciding on what I try in the image before starting it. Going forward I'm also trying to decide whether the painterly look or the more purposeful ink style drawing would suit the project better. The graphical look of the ink style is more readable at small sizes but the painted look is more appealing. I might try combine the two but as of now they're both taking a bit too long to complete. I'm trying to finish one every second day but I'm only reaching that goal every once in a while having most take three or four days to complete to any kind of level that I'm happy with. All in all, there is still a lot I need to figure out. One thing I'm starting to enjoy is combining two animals in the latest ones I've done. With these I've made them with these first paintings, I've made them ordinary animals and focused on mood to create the sense that they are creatures to fight. By combining two animals instead, it's easy to tell that they are monsters and they're more interesting to paint as well as look at. It's always a good idea to look back on previous illustrations you've done to try find areas which you could do a faster way or cut out entirely. Streamlining your process so it runs efficiently is one of the most effective ways to speed up how long you take to finish work. A part of that is also making sure you don't keep going over areas you've done and making sure you put down marks with purpose. The really nice thing about doing these quickly is I can experiment with things and am able to do a lot of problem solving very quickly. One outcome of that is I find these little things that work that I can start incorporating in my art going forward, adding to my ongoing toolkit.
For the second bear, I did a few more compositional sketches, trying to find something that gave the sense of motion and also adding a bit more story. The first composition I liked, but it was a little too static, even though it had a very nice story element and a storybook kind of feel. The bear also didn't take enough of the canvas with the deer taking up too much of the image. I like the deer idea though, as it gave the bear a sense of scale and story, so I did find a way to make it work by just silhouetting them in the final composition I chose. With the second sketch I found it starting to look too much like a person in a bear suit with the arms so separated. Soon after, I found a sketch I liked. While working on the final line drawing, I was just thinking about interesting shapes and trying to make sure that all the forms are reading. If I'm having trouble with parts of the sketch at an angle, I would usually straighten it out and fix any structure or form issues I have, then just angle it back into place later. I was having a lot of issues with the angle of the mouth and how the bottom of the jaw rested on the arm. Never quite fixing it, but oh well.
before this wraps up, I just wanted to talk a little about my thoughts on rest and how that affects learning. I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast where he had this sleep expert on. If you haven't seen it, I would recommend it. He goes through how the body learns and how sleep is so important for that. If you don't sleep, none of the stuff you're trying to learn will sink in. So all the extra hours I put in would have probably been better spent sleeping as my main goal was to learn at the time. He goes through a lot and some of it is quite shocking. The bits where he talks about how lack of sleep shortens your lifespan was especially shocking for me because when I started drawing I had spent the best part of three years either not sleeping or sleeping for four hours just trying to do a little bit more work. For the longest time that's what I thought it took to get anywhere in this line of work. Even looking back I would think though unhealthy it helped me get to where I am and from what I've heard a lot of other artists did something very similar in the beginning to give them a bit of a jump start in their career. My opinions have changed the last few years however through having a very structured approach to my day and making sure I get enough rest I find my mind being a lot sharper and my ability to learn faster. If I could have done it all over again I think I would have valued sleep a lot more and focused on how much I got done each hour rather than working every waking moment. I would have also tried to have a small nap after I had done my studies for the day to help them sink in a bit better. In doing these things, I think I would have been further along than where I am now. But it's hard to say. Having worked so many years trying to fit one more hour of painting in, rather than focusing on structuring my day properly and resting enough, then changing those ideas to have a more structured schedule and seeing the benefits. I can now say I better understand the saying, work smarter, not harder. Thanks everyone for watching the video. I'll try to get to the other videos as soon as I can. Take care.